Welcome to Stone Cross Mountain Museum. Hi, my name is Don Hopkins, and this is Stone Cross Mountain Museum. I'm the owner of it, and I have spent 30 years in collecting and assembling this museum collection. This is the only museum collection like this in the world, and I've made a documentary to share this with the world. So as you view this documentary, I would like for you to share it with your friends so they can learn about this natural wonder and miracle of creation. Patrick County lies along the Virginia-North Carolina border, where the rolling green hills of the Piedmont meet the plateau of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Stewart, Virginia, which is the county seat, was built along a major passage to the western frontier and is nestled in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. The gateway to the Blue Ridge Mountains, Patrick County has been blessed with nature's abundance. The Bull Mountain can be seen in the background from many parts of Patrick County. Some views are very picturesque, like this one on Highway 57 near Ferry Stone State Park. It is beautiful in all seasons. Mabry Mill is located on the Blue Ridge Parkway and is one of the most photographed scenes in the whole state of Virginia. Ferry Stone State Park is located on State Route 57 in northeastern Patrick County, Virginia. The park has more than 4,500 acres with picnic shelters, camping and cabin areas, hiking and horseback trails, and a 168-acre lake for water sports. Visitors to the park are allowed to hunt for the stone crosses in designated areas. Although people have been coming to Patrick County to hunt for these crosses of stone for many generations, most of the people in the world have never heard of this wonder of nature. The mountains, streams, and rocks are ageless, timeless, and beautiful. They are a source of wonder and inspiration to those who enjoy the opportunity to relax and reminisce on the past while experiencing the peace and beauty of the present. The Bull Mountain stands alone in Patrick County and is nearly 3,000 feet above sea level at its highest point where the fire tower is located. As you enter Patrick County from the east, the Bull Mountain Range towers majestically above you. Your first view of Bull Mountain is panoramic. As the early settlers to Patrick County cleared land for farming and used the logs for lumber to build houses and barns, an amazing discovery was made. From the sawmill roadbeds where the wagons had wore away the mulch and dirt that covered the stones, there emerged stones with a cross embedded in them. 
The scientific or geological name for the crosses is starlight crystals, which are formed of iron, aluminum, and silicate. As we observe these crosses of stone, we are made to wonder what is the meaning of this natural wonder. Is this a message from God? How are they formed and why? Are they truly nature's emblem of the crucifixion as some believe? Why were they formed here? Don Hopkins, whose ancestors have been in Patrick County, Virginia for four generations, made an amazing discovery in 1980. While clearing out the overflow pipe from his spring, which fed water into his mountain home, he discovered a single stone cross had washed out of his spring. After searching the area around the spring, he found more crosses. To Mr. Hopkins' surprise, he found crosses 10 to 12 feet below the surface where he had graded a road to the spring. Mr. Hopkins developed a screen sifting mining process where he separates the ore from the dirt by brushing the dirt through a screen. The stones are too large to go through the wire mesh screen, so they remain on top of the screen while the dirt goes through. The stones are then gathered into a wire basket and washed clean. After the stones are washed, the crosses are separated from the rest of the stones. Many of the loose stones in Mr. Hopkins' collection were found using this mining process. It is a slow process and tedious, but will yield many stones by repeating the process over and over. The stones are separated by type and size and graded, then mounted onto display boards. All right, this rock here has got a white band going through it. Now, when, when that white quartz went into that rock, it was molten liquid. You can see the little crosses there. And this one right here, and you see all those little specks, that's where the garnets were, and they weathered out. Now, even with my glasses on, I can't see the shape of those dots, but I took a picture with my flop and put it in the computer and enlarged it, and it's got the shape of the garnets. This is a hard rock, where I was talking about a while ago, different hardness. This in here, you can see the cross is still there. This is a hard rock. This is a soft rock. The soft rock will weather out and release them. And these are some more of the Georgia stones, and you see how large, how huge you are. 
and how perfect shape they are. Everything that you see in this museum is the way they come out of the ground. They have not been cut or altered or shaped in any way. Right over here is a, a good display. It's got different uh, places, Russia, North Carolina, New Mexico, Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota, Patrick County, Virginia, and you see how small some of them are. It's just perfect shape, as tiny as they are. That's the St. Andrews, and this is a cross. They come out of the ground completely perfect, even in microscopic sizes. And this one right here is my pride and joy. It's got six rosettes on it and six crosses. And we carried this rock over a mile to get it out of the woods. And it's if you find a rock with one cross on it, that's a good day. But to find one that's got sixes, and you see how this is in layers? Each one of them layers represents a time cycle. So I've had people ask me, you reckon it just popped up like a snowflake, but this shows that they were formed over a long period of time. And right back here is another peewee, small enough to fit inside the loop of a hairpin. This display has some of the natural stones. This comes from Patrick County, from the Bull Mountain. I've got little markers so you can identify the crosses. Each place is a marker, is a cross. You see how many crosses is in a rock like that. Now, some of the crosses just on top of the rock, some of them go all the way through. So it's a, a variety of structures. This one right here has got a real good cross. It's got four crosses on it, but on the left edge of it there is a real pretty Roman cross. And there's one in this corner right above that dot. It's facing towards me. It's as perfect as any of them that's ever been cut out. As you can see where the markers are, you can see the crosses. I've got a beautiful collection. That one's right on the edge of the rock. Now this, this rock here in the back, it's got little micro crystals in it. If you move your head, you'll see it sparkle. It's got little crystals in it. Beautiful cross. And right here where, where the markers are. Now this is Russian stone. When I first found the Russian stone, it was at a gym show. And the, the whole booth was Russian stone. And uh, they had the crosses. And I was skeptical. I thought Russian and the cross didn't go together. So I asked the man, I said, is there any way you can verify these actually come from Russia? And he said, I'm a Russian. I lived in Russia for 40 years, and I've been in Canada three years, and I worked in the mine and dug them myself. I said, that's good enough for me. And this one here blends in with the rock, but you can see how perfect shaped it is. Here's one that's half buried. This has got a beautiful cross on it. And right on the front of this one here, and where the dot is, and then you can see the Russian stone. This is the more Russian. Now, all the Russian that I've found is in this white, silvery matrix type rock. And it's like a sandstone, it'll granulate if you, if you rub it. But I've got them from Russia, um, France, Patrick County, Minnesota, Australia, Madagascar, New Mexico, North Carolina, and Georgia. Now in North Carolina and Georgia, the stones are much larger than they are up here. And they go up in North Carolina, they go to three or four inches. In Georgia, they go to five or six inches. There's actually five colors of the crosses, and it's the same colors as different races of people. And this is the rosette. Most people have never seen one of them. That's a symbol that's on the rescue squad. Now, they're formed in a thickness scale from paper thin to two inches or more. They're on a hardness scale from zero to seven and a half. Now, seven and a half is the hardness of quartz. There's five colors of them, and it's the same colors as the different races of people. They go from nothing to perfect in every stage in between. In other words, the first, first is just a very faint image of a cross, and then the image gets a little plainer and a little plainer all the way to a perfect cross. And they're found in the matrix rocks and loose in the dirt. So the loose ones came just like they are, they haven't been taken out of the rock.
Now this is one of the thick ones. You can see how thick that one is. And back here and here. But all these crosses, everything you see in this tray, this is a natural shape. This is the way it come out of the ground. It has not been cut or altered or shaped in any way. This tray here shows the book. I've written a little book and a big book and a video about the crosses. And I've got pictures in there, I've got colored pictures, and so I've got a, a good representation of the crosses as they are. This is sort of a Duke's mixture. This is the way they come out of the ground, the way you see them. I've got one row of Georgia, and this is local. And we find little pieces up in the woods. And so if it's anything on them, we'll bring them out. Now this shows the different stages of development from nothing to perfect. The first stage is a faint image of a cross, then the image of the cross gets a little plainer, a little more detailed, all the way to a completely perfect cross. And it's the same in all the shapes. Now this one, you can see how narrow the cross piece is. It gets a little wider and a little wider and a little wider till it gets even with the upright. When it extends beyond the upright, that's how you get your cross design. So it's in stages. Now this is a thin one. That's a little thicker, a little thicker, a little thicker. You see everything is in stages, in increments. This is some more of the Russian stone. This is the first little tray I built to show the sizes of them. They go from less than an eighth of an inch to two inches, and it's a gradu graduated size scale. So, and there's actually three basic crosses, the Roman, the Maltese, and the St. Andrews. Now, watch my fingers. This is the St. Andrews, but you can get many different shapes in that one shape. So it's 30 or 40 variations, but all of them come from three basic shapes. And then there's a single crystal. The single crystal don't have a cross, but you can see it's a formation because it's got a definite shape. And this is some of the different shapes that I was talking about where I showed you my fingers. But this is one of the thin ones now. They're, they come paper thin and then on up to two inches. And this is a little cross on there. Sometimes it looks like the cross is just etched on there. It's so faint. And this is what I call a little peewee. You can see how tiny it is. Some of them are so small they'll fit inside the loop of a hairpin. And then this one, it's got little bumps on it, but that's little garnets. And so you see how smooth the planes are on this one. If this had been cut with a tool to make it that smooth, the little garnets wouldn't be there. They'd be cut away. So that shows it was formed that perfect. Now these are in the rough but you can see some outline of a cross in each one of them. And when the weather out of the base rock, it sometimes leaves some of the matrix rock on it. But you can see some of them is just almost perfect. These are weather stones, and after they lay out for hundreds of thousands of years, they weather down where you gotta look close to even see the cross. And all the little specks is little garnets. Now, this one right here comes from Russia, I mean from Georgia. It's uh, four inches, the St. Andrews is six inches, and the single is five. If you look down this way, you'll see 72 sizes. These three trays are Virginia, that's North Carolina, and that's Georgia. So the further south you go, the bigger they get. Now this is where we started out in the mountain. I had a small building out there, and the mine was open to the public. Then we moved down on the highway to this location, and then we moved down here where the museum is. So we've had three different locations, and we dig the dirt out of the mountain and shove it up into buckets, and then we take the buckets and put them on the screen table and brush the dirt back and forth, and the dirt goes through the screen. We gather up the stones, be about a double handful, comes out of each bucket, and then put them in a little wire basket. You can see the wire baskets here. And right here is one of them. And submerge it in a five gallon bucket of water and turn it back and forth like an agitator in a washing machine and go through 10 buckets of water. I've dug out of the mountain over 3,000 buckets of dirt. That's 30,000 washings. That's what it took to get the collection I've got. And all these, as perfect shape as they are, that's the way they come out of the ground. They have not been cut or altered or shaped in any way.
Now, there's symbols in the rocks, individuals and in the rock, and these are the symbols. And we see this, the cross represents Christ, this one represents the believer, this represents the unbeliever. Now, the egg shape is a symbol of rejection. One of the thieves rejected Christ. When you was in school, if you put the wrong answer, the teacher give you an X mark. This one, if you add on to the bottom of this one, it'll be the same shape as this one. If you shorten the Roman, it'll be the same shape as this one. What I'm trying to say is this shape is in this shape. The believer is in Christ, but you can't put the unbeliever in there. It don't match. Now, we live in a country of symbols. Let's say, for an example, you see the Chevrolet emblem on the front of a pickup. It don't say Chevrolet nowhere, but you know that's a Chevrolet because of that emblem. If you see McDonald's arches, a three-year-old can tell you what that is. Now, what the cross represents, the three top points of the cross represents God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And the bottom point is one way. There's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. He has suffered crucifixion and death on the cross. We believe this is nature's emblem of the crucifixion.